Chào cả nhà, trong ba năm học tiếng Việt của tôi, tôi thấy rằng học thuộc từ vựng mới là một trong những điểm khó nhất khi học ngôn ngữ này. Sau khi bắt đầu học tiếng Việt, tôi thấy thật choáng ngợp khi nhận ra là có hàng vạn từ kỳ lạ phải học. Nếu người ta muốn học tiếng Việt thông thạo sau 3 năm và cũng phải biết khoảng 6.000 từ mới, thì tức là chúng mình phải học 6 từ mới mỗi ngày. Có thể việc này nghe không khó, nhưng tôi đảm bảo sẽ rất vất vả. Để học thủ vựng lâu dài thì uh, chỉ nhồi nhét danh sách thủ vựng không được đâu. Ta phải có chiến lược thông minh để học hiệu quả và không phí thời gian của mình nữa. During my Vietnamese quest, I've tried dozens of different language learning tools, some of which were really useful and some of which more or less wasted my time completely. Over the last three years or so, I've been gradually refining my method, building like a flowchart, and I'm pretty certain that what I'm doing now is much more effective than what I was doing at the start. So if you're looking for some new ways to improve your vocab learning skills, then just keep watching. Uh, and before I go on, I just want to emphasize that everyone's brains are different, and this is just what worked for me. You know, if you've been doing this for years and you know what works for you, then don't let me change your mind. But if you think that you've got some room for improvement on this front, then go ahead and listen, see if you find anything helpful. Này, các cậu cũng đang xem video phải không? Ra đây tớ bảo cái này. Hiện tại, TVO đang có một vài lớp nhóm đa dạng trình độ và có lớp phù hợp cho những người bận bịu. Các bạn hãy xem thông tin ở bên này và đăng ký cho mình ngay một lớp học phù hợp với bản thân nhé để có thể áp dụng ngay được những gì mình học. Thế thôi, không làm mất thời gian của các bạn nữa. Mình cùng xem tiếp video nhé. So what are we really looking for in a vocab learning system? I think there are three things, right? I think we're looking for a system which is contextual, relevant, and repeatable. So let's look at what those words mean now. So when I say contextual, what I mean is that the words need to be attached to some sort of association, some sort of context to help you remember them. When we're learning words, what we're really doing is we're attaching these memories to some sort of association, whether that be a picture, a sound, some just a very, very strong memory, maybe a uh, context within a sentence. Otherwise, we're just going to forget them. And this is why learning words just from their definitions doesn't work. Nobody learns from definitions. We learn from context. So we need a contextual system that actually integrates these associations into the learning process. By relevant, I mean that the words you're learning have to be appropriate to your current level. So they have to be the sort of words that you're actually likely to need or encounter in some sort of conversation. This may sound very obvious, but you'd be surprised by how many courses and textbook teach absolutely irrelevant words at quite a low level. I was actually flipping through an old textbook the other day, and I found that they were teaching some really irrelevant words like uh, which means hieroglyphics alongside some actually genuinely very useful words like gom nhan, which means to accept or to recognize. It's actually a very, very, very common problem. You need to learn relevant vocabulary because actually the bulk of the vocab learning process isn't really learning the word so much as just observing it in natural contexts. So it needs to be the actual sort of word that you encounter, otherwise you're never going to learn it. You're going to be up in this real uphill battle where you keep trying to memorize this word over and over and over again and keep forgetting it just because you never actually observe it. So a really crucial part of any learning system for vocabulary is to have words which you're going to encounter and use. Lastly, we need our system to be repeatable, as in we need to be able to practice our vocabulary over and over and over, over a long period of time. I think a lot of people fall into this trap of thinking that they only need to learn a word once, and then they'll just remember it, like you just take a word and put it in your brain and then you're done. But it really doesn't work like that. I think a friend told me once that you had to learn a word at least seven times before you actually remember it. And I don't know if that number is exact, but it sounds about right from my experience. And so we need a way of repeating it over a long interval. So uh, it can't be the sort of system like just learning a flashcard deck once and then just forgetting about it because you're never going to remember it that way. It needs to be spaced over a long period of time. So now let's look at some vocab learning sources and systems and tools that tick those three boxes. 
So if you're not quite at an advanced level yet, there's a good chance that the prospect of reading books is very intimidating. And not without good reason. Even reading a book for children requires quite a high level. Before I was really capable of reading books at a reasonable pace, I found reading news sites a nice middle ground. They're generally written to be comprehensible instead of fancy, and they're quite short and easily digestible. At first it would take me maybe 30 minutes to fully comprehend a whole opinion piece, but now it's almost effortless. So for my first two years or so of learning Vietnamese, using subtitles, Vietnamese subtitles was my go-to method for learning new vocabulary, and honestly, it was pretty effective. There are some pretty uh, clear upsides to learning from subtitles. For one, you can pause it whenever you want and just write down the new words. You don't have to try and figure out what they're saying. The vocabulary is typically written to reflect daily speech and, rather than trying to be literary. There is, however, one really big downside to using subtitles, which is that most native Vietnamese shows and films aren't subtitled at all. So you're going to have to watch other foreign shows and use the Vietnamese subtitles from them. And that comes with its own problems. So for example, you definitely should not be watching any English language stuff subtitled into Vietnamese because your brain's just going to listen to the audio and ignore the subtitles. So you're going to have to watch maybe like Korean shows or anime and stuff like that and use the Vietnamese subtitles on that. So for a good year or two, my go-to shows were K-dramas and anime because they were, you know, subbed into Vietnamese. I'd watch maybe one 20-minute episode every couple of days, although in honesty it would take up to an hour just as I'd have to keep pausing it and looking at words. And I'd aim for maybe 20 new words each episode. At first it was really, really grueling, but then it got pretty natural. Uh, one quick note is that Netflix has really, really, really great subtitle coverage. Virtually every show I find on Netflix has Vietnamese subtitles, and a lot of them have dubs as well. If you're looking for somewhere to start, really check out Netflix, and you can use it along with the app called Learn Languages with Netflix, which makes the whole process a lot more convenient. So I think every serious language learner has at some point decided, oh, I should try reading a book only to actually try reading a book and suddenly realize how hard it is to actually understand something written for native speakers. Fortunately, there is a middle step, which is in manga. Every single household in Vietnam owns multiple copies of Doraemon and Conan the Detective. I'm, I'm serious, every single household has those books. And it's just a lot easier to read than regular books because of the pictures and just the lower level of language. Unfortunately, there can be a lot of slang, which can be quite hard to understand. But if you want to start reading and regular books are too hard for you, I would definitely recommend using manga. So, Wiktionary is an open source dictionary, you know, like Wikipedia for words. And it's my go-to dictionary for when I'm learning new words. It just goes into a lot more depth than what you'd expect from a Vietnamese to English dictionary. So, you know, it can provide sources and examples and etymologies and different definitions and all sorts of stuff. It's really, really great. So take the entry for da as an example. It lists eight usage examples for each meaning, a paragraph of usage notes, an etymology, and suggests a more literary alternative, which is da, which I didn't know about. It's really more than you can ask for in terms of providing the right context. So, Glosby, is it pronounced that way? Is it Glosby? Glosby? I, I have no idea. But it stands alongside Wiktionary as one of the best ways to get the meanings of new words. So, like Wiktionary, it's a crowdsourced dictionary, but instead of getting volunteers to just write definitions, instead it automatically compares millions and millions and millions of translations and then uses machine learning to figure out the definitions of words. Glosby is extraordinarily useful for two reasons. Firstly, it has any word you could possibly want to know. If it's not on Glosby, I can guarantee you that it's too obscure to be worth learning. When Wiktionary fails, I can always rely on Glosby to save me. Secondly, the way that Glosby generates its entries means that you always have a mountain of context to work with. Most entries have pages and pages of sample sentences that can, if you look carefully, tell you exactly what the word means and how to use it. That said, Glosby really isn't perfect. The automatically generated translations really aren't reliable, so you, sh you shouldn't really be using those. Instead, you should be working out the definition yourself based on what you read. 
This might sound a little bit strange, but Google Images has actually turned into one of my absolute favorite language learning tools, and it's a really crucial part of my language learning process now. I don't remember where I learned to do this. I think I just read an offhand comment on the internet somewhere, which is that if you need to figure out the meaning of a word, just Google a picture of it. This helps a lot because the way the Google algorithm works means that the pictures that you find are most likely to be the ones that correlate with the most common usage of each word. So this gives you two advantages. For one, it gives you a strong association to help you remember the word, but it can also give you extra meaning about how that word is used, extra context. So here's a real life example of what happened to me. I just read the word sumvai somewhere and I was trying to figure out what it meant. Wiktionary didn't have anything and I could vaguely figure out from Glosby that it was about being together. And then I looked up on Google Images and noticed that every single picture related to sumvai had a family together during that. From this, I learned that sumvai means being together like a family during that and it's almost always used in that context. This isn't just a one-off example either. Using Google Images to, give, uh, to get info about a word that a dictionary can't provide is a daily occurrence for me. Google Images isn't great for everything though. Sometimes with more abstract words, it's really impossible to find a picture that's going to give you any extra information or help you remember anything at all. But I'd say for like 70% of words, it really does make a difference. Anki is odd because there's two possibilities here. Either you have absolutely no idea what Anki is, you've never heard of it, or you know exactly what Anki is and you are sick to death of hearing about it. Uh, for those who don't know, Anki is a flashcard app that plays a similar role to more famous apps like Quizlet, but what, what gives it its strength is its implementation of what's called spaced repetition. The idea behind spaced repetition is that in order to build a long-term memory, you need to let yourself forget it a little bit periodically before relearning it. So for anyone who's ever had the experience of cramming a whole bunch of vocabulary the night before a test and then forgetting about it completely within three weeks, this is why. You need to give yourself time to forget things and then relearn them in order to build long-term memories. So spaced repetition systems are based on this principle. They'll give you some words to learn and then they'll wait a little bit. They'll wait two days and then five days and then seven days or something like that before practicing it again. And so over a long time, you build stronger and stronger and stronger memories. What's great about Anki is that compared to other flashcard systems, I'm more or less guaranteed to learn, remember a new word if I'm using it properly. So I started using Anki, I think around mid 2020, and a year after that, I had learned about 3,000 new words and could actually remember them reliably, which is a huge improvement over any other system I'd used before. One of the major downsides of Anki though is that its power comes at the cost of user friendliness. It's really not the sort of app that you can just jump into and use like Duolingo or Quizlet. You actually have to you know, read manuals and watch videos about how to use it. So if you don't think you can do that, then Anki isn't for you. But if you can figure it out, it is easily the most powerful system available. Alongside being very difficult to use on a technical level, it also doesn't really provide much guidance onto what good and flashcards actually look like. So when I started Anki, I really had no idea what I was doing. So every flashcard I made just had two sides. It just had the word on one side and the English translation on the other. And you know, I was, I was going through like 30 words a day this way. But what I realized was that after you know, a couple of months of doing this, I could recall the definitions of words, but I still didn't really know what they meant. I didn't know how to actually use them in a context, or sometimes I just completely misunderstood their definition. And so after that, I realized I had to change my card style. I started using like the context. I started putting the words actually in sentences, and I started using Google Images to give me that extra information. So I found that a lot more helpful. My other mistake was trying to learn too many words at once. When I started, I was really motivated and didn't really have much work to do at the time, so I was trying to learn like 30 words a day, which made sense at first, but the way that spaced repetition works means that you're going to have to revise all of these words, and all of these revisions start stacking up and stacking up and stacking up, 
And before I knew it, I had to revise like more than 500 words a day, which, I mean, for one hand, I couldn't remember all of that. And secondly, it just started taking so much time. It took me like hours to finish my Anki, and that's just not sustainable unless you're a maniac. So I found that limiting myself to 10 new words day, per day maximum really helped me pace myself, stop me from burning out, and also just actually you know, remember the words more reliably. If all of that sounds really daunting, it is. Anki is a really intensive app and it you know, demands that you set aside time every single day to use it. But learning Vietnamese is really intensive. Learning Vietnamese takes hours and hours. And if the idea of spending 15 to 30 minutes a day is just too much for you, then honestly just give up on Vietnamese. You're never going to learn it. It takes hours. That's what learning a language is like. So if you have the motivation to learn, if you think you can do it, then I definitely recommend Anki. Just 15 minutes a day to really help you learn all of that new vocab. Comprehensible input, i.e. reading and listening things that you find easy enough to understand, seems to be the darling of every language learning guru out there, and not without good reason. Input seems to be a pretty small part of most language learning curricula, when instead they'll focus on things like vocab and grammar. But in reality, I'd say input is 80% of the journey. It is the most crucial component of any language learning curriculum. In brief, observing words in their natural context is the only real way to learn their actual usage and meaning and it's a great way to actually remember them too. The more input that you're getting, the more you're learning Vietnamese, the more your reading, writing, speaking, listening will improve. And if you're not getting any input at all, you're probably not even really learning Vietnamese, or at least not in a way that you're going to remember. So comprehensible input pairs really well with spaced repetition. Because if you try to learn a word with spaced repetition without comprehensible input, it's probably never really going to enter your vocabulary. You're never really going to understand it. And meanwhile, if you try to observe a word that you haven't learnt to some degree, there's a good chance that you'll just skim over it or forget it. So what's the best way to get comprehensible input? It really depends on your level. If you're a beginner, it's really, really difficult because, I mean, there's just so few beginner-focused materials in Vietnamese out there. I think the best thing to do at a beginner's level is just conversation, just listening to people speak. If you've got a teacher, maybe spend more time just listening to them explain things and having very simple conversations will be enough. And do more of that instead of you know, playing games and learning grammar, in my opinion. Meanwhile, if you're at an intermediate or advanced level, it's much easier. Just try and find time every day to maybe watch TV, listen to podcasts, read books. Anything you find that's in Vietnamese is comprehensible input. Just do a little bit of that, you're learning. So first off, I think everyone should take time to tinker with their own vocab learning process and see what works for them. What I'm saying now is not absolutely normative. You don't have to listen to every single thing that I say. And if you've got your own way of doing things that you know works for you, please just don't let me change you, okay? Just do what works for you. But I thought you might find it helpful to see my whole process. First, I try and find time every day to read and watch media where I can get new vocab. If I'm feeling lazy, I'll read an opinion piece on VN Express, note down four or five new words, and call it a day. If I've got more time and energy, I'll put on a film or TV show with subtitles, pause it occasionally if I'm struggling to understand what I'm reading, and write down what I find. An alternative is I'll spend an hour or so reading, highlighting all the useful words and phrases I see. When I see words I don't know, my first reaction is to try and guess the meaning based on the context alone and quickly use a dictionary or Google Translate to see if I'm correct. About half the time I get it right, and the other half I'm completely off. If it's something I feel is worth learning, I look it up on my main sources to try and properly discern the meaning. I start in Wiktionary. Then, if Wiktionary doesn't have what I'm looking for, I try and figure out the meaning on Glosby and use Google Images to give me extra context and associations. Once I've got all of that info, I put it all on a note in my Vietnamese Anki deck. For each word, I include the English translation, a picture if possible, and an example of usage in a sentence if necessary. Once it's in my Anki deck, it will occasionally pop up on my Anki list for the day to help me reinforce my memory. While it's doing that, I'll pay attention to whenever it gets used in my reading and listening practice and ask myself, is that the word I know? What does it mean in this context? Is it maybe being used in a different way to what I'm used to here? And I take a mental note of it. Once I combine all the above, I have a reliable and comprehensive way to improve my vocabulary on a daily basis, and it's been working pretty well for me so far. 
So one of the undercurrents of language learning folklore is you should try to do as much as you can in your target language as possible. And that's broadly helpful advice. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that on the surface, but sometimes this idea manifests itself malignantly as the idea that you should only really be learning words from their native language definitions. So you should only be using Vietnamese definitions for Vietnamese words. And this is frankly terrible advice, absolutely terrible advice. So here's a definition of a word you may or may not know. Bua. Here's a Vietnamese definition. Dục cụ để nện, đám thường hồn một khối sắt cha thẳng cán. Have you figured out what that means yet? Now let me give you the English translation. Hammer. Which of these do you think is more likely to help you understand and remember your new word? Remember that when you're learning new vocab, your only real goal is to build understanding and associations. And if using your native language helps you do that, then absolutely do it. There's no problem with that. Some people might protest that they want to stop translating in their heads. They don't want to be translating from English to Vietnamese when they're trying to speak Vietnamese. And that's, that's reasonable. That's what you want to get to. But you can't jump there. You can't skip the step of translation. It just can't be done. You need to get there really slowly by building exposure and practicing and all of that. The idea that you can just skip the translating step entirely, I, I think it's just nonsense. I don't know if that's actually possible for a human adult. So don't think too hard about that. Just learn it from the basics and you'll get there. Most Vietnamese to English dictionaries, while better than Vietnamese only dictionaries, they, they, they kind of suck. The most famous example would be V-Dict, which has really excellent coverage. It has way more words than Wiktionary, but most of those words, most of those definitions don't really give you any information beyond a single translation. You know, it doesn't have any usage examples or anything. And also, those translations are wrong. They're usually, well not usually, but a lot of the time they're incorrect. I just tested a quick example. I looked up the word va on V-Dict and only got a single word as a translation, wasted. Not only is this kind of vague, it's also incorrect. Va in every context that I've seen means martial arts or kung fu, and I don't know where wasted came from. Remember that learning a new word requires more than just a translation. You also need context. Any dictionary that doesn't give you context is probably more harm than help. This one might be a little bit more controversial. I don't mean to say that native speakers aren't incredibly proficient in their own language. Obviously they are, but native speakers of any language are notoriously bad at explaining concepts to, uh, to foreigners in a way that they understand, unless they're experienced teachers, of course. This isn't a huge issue with simple words, with easy translations, words like sleep or table. But it is going to become a problem when you start dealing with maybe grammatical words or words with complicated usage. The most common example I can think of is the word datum. If you ask any Vietnamese person what datum means, they're going to tell you it means used to. And I believed them for a very long time until I realized that I'd been misled. The real meaning of datum is actually much closer to once, as you know, I once loved a man, something like that, right? Of course, you can and should use conversation with native speakers as a source of input, but you have to use it in the right way. The trick is to observe them rather than getting them to explain things to you. Take a mental note of the words you hear and then try to work out what the patterns are yourself. Sometimes it's obviously going to be necessary to ask someone what a word means and you should go for it. Just take what they say with a grain of salt and compare it to other sources later yourself. Taking Vietnamese people's grammar and vocab explanations at face value is a path to madness, really. Trust me on this one. The chances are you've been through some sort of compulsory language learning curriculum at school, in which cases, A, my condolences, and B, you probably went through a phase of trying to memorize as much vocabulary as you could just by memorizing a list of vocab. And I'm not going to beat around the bush here. This doesn't work. It's solidly the worst and yet most commonly used language learning system in the world. But it ticks none of the boxes that actually make up effective vocabulary learning. You're not getting meaningful repetition because once you've done your test, you don't learn it again. You don't do it with any context. And sometimes the words are just arbitrarily selected based on topic and have nothing to do with what you're actually likely to come across. So I'm, I'm not going to give you any more information on this. Just please don't do it. It doesn't work. You're wasting your time. Do something more effective, please. 
So this is the last of the very common but not so great vocab learning strategies. It's a learning from a flashcard deck without any element of spaced repetition. Quizlet seems to be the most common platform for this. I too was guilty of loading up Quizlet decks with hundreds of words I just learned and then practicing them intensively for a couple of days and then just forgetting about them. Needless to say, my retention rate was scarcely above 10%. It really wasn't good. Don't get me wrong, flashcards are an incredibly effective way to learn just about anything, but they require constant and spaced repetition in order to form long-term memories. Anki is and remains the best way of doing this. Any other flashcard app without a element of spaced repetition like Quizlet or anything else, it just doesn't really hold a candle to Anki in the long term. At least that's been my experience through extensively using both of these systems. So those are my thoughts after about three and a half years of trial and error. And I built my system that works for me and maybe you can learn from it. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts too. Have you got your own system that's different from mine? Do you have a different way of learning vocab that I didn't mention? Please mention it in the comments. I'd really appreciate that and happy to talk about it. And yeah, please, you know, the, the stuff, like and subscribe, you know, you know how it works. Bye. <laughs>